Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Today is Valentine's Day. Love is in the air when Cupid is flying around shooting arrows on this one particular couple. And they go around sending some gifts, getting ready for a nice uh, date night, you know, going to see a movie, have delicious dinner. Of course, buy them some chocolates or candy hearts with messages on them, Valentine's cards, you name it. And it's not just for your loved ones, it can also be for your friends too. Everywhere around, love is everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to continue to review another romantic drama also starring Channing Tatum, which I previously reviewed Dear John yesterday on Super Bowl Sunday, of course. And I already showed you the, the Blu-ray, but I'm going to show you again. I'm going to be reviewing the movie that also co-stars with Rachel McAdams, The Bow, right here. <laughs> It's based on true events, but in some cases or another, inspires by a true story of a real-life couple, Kim and Cricket Carpenter, where they got married, they're just hanging around, going through dates and making love, till all of a sudden, tragedy hits, especially with this couple, Paige and Leo. You know, both played by Richard McAdams and Channing Tatum, where they're just about to go to a movie theater. They just saw whatever film that they were playing. I think it's a romantic film, any kind. They're just driving around on a snowy night until suddenly they got into a tragic car accident where where he, he suffered a whiplash while but fully recovered. But Paige wasn't lucky. She had a head trauma, amnesia, which is memory loss, of course, amnesia. So she, she pretty much lost uh, five years of her life that she remembers. And now she has to fully recover to bring back all the memories that she had in the past and that also can lead to secrets going around coming from her and her family not to mention her boyfriend yeah so that's what the story is about it was considered to be the highest grossing romantic drama since 1980 I'm assuming what movie uh, came out that year that became the highest grossing film could be Ordinary People, perhaps, or any other romantic drama that came out. Yes, uh, because it was in the budget of $30 million, and it made $19.6.1 million at the box office uh, worldwide. So this was a huge success, even on Valentine's Day weekend, too. <laughs> yeah. And um, also to note, since both of these movies, including Dear John, were both released by Screen Gems, yep, studio that's a subsidiary uh, by Sony, um, with Dear John being co-produced with Relativity Media, yeah, Ryan Kavanaugh is his production company, but The Bow is uh, co-produced with Spike Glass Entertainment, and surprisingly enough, this was the last film that was released uh, by the production company of Roger Burabom and and uh, Gary Barber because during that year they became the the CEOs for MGM when they were when they just got emerged from bankruptcy at the time uh, yes uh, MGM was going for bankruptcy problems in 2010 that's why they haven't been releasing that many movies 
at this point on, only a few films. And they tried to revive the company, but unfortunately they were using it as a production company for several movies that they had to co-produce. Yeah, mostly Paramount, uh, Sony, and all these other companies at the time. Until they finally uh, revive again, hoping that they'll still continue to distribute their films or, or perhaps maybe still work with other studios, which I know that's what they're doing. Um, but they're now under uh, United Artists releasing, for that matter. Anyway, so it kind of does inspire in real life terms because, yes, this could happen to anybody. It's not just their real life couple, but uh, amnesia is a very serious tactic because. Yes, people do get amnesia after getting hit by a car or or any car accident or, or in some cases any other accident that occurs. So it takes a lot of time to regain your memory until you know you'll finally be able to remember again. Right, it's not going to be easy, but it takes time unless you end up getting hit again and your memory's back. Just like all these other shows and movies that they often do. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, Spyglass was uh, resurrected in 2019, but it was now known as Spyglass Media Group. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, yeah, because now that uh, Roger Ber Birnbaum and, and Gary Barber have no longer um, become the CEOs for MGM, they decided to move on. So I think they're just doing some, you know, production films or some TV shows too. I believe uh, that was for sure. Um, yeah, like the last movie I reviewed, it did got criticized when it came out. Uh, got a 31% on Rotten Tomatoes. Again, does not deserve. I know it's their opinion, but they're not exactly, you know, 100% right at times. Okay, I know, I know it's hard. Okay, I don't want to say that they're wrong all the time, but it happens. I mean, hey, you know, I have reviewed movies that, even if there are ones that some people love, I mean, there are times when I'm not so sure if I was going to like it or not. But then there are ones that I do love the same way that critics love too. So it happens. Okay, doesn't mean, I mean, doesn't mean that, you know, you know, we have tough times here and there, but we know we want to have, we want to have our own freedom to, to have our own opinions. So as long as, you know, it doesn't become a problem. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, let's get to the review and we'll explain about um, the actual story. About this. Um, it stars Rachel McAdams, as you may know from Mean Girls, but she was also in The Notebook, and she was in movies like Morning Glory, as well as Midnight in Paris, that was a Woody Allen picture, and any other film that she's been in. Oh, oh yeah, uh, Wedding Crashes is another one. <laughs> okay. Channing Tatum, as you may know, yeah, he was in the movie She's the Man, with Amanda Bynes. I think that was one of his earlier films. But roughly at the same time, he was in Step Up. Yes, he was also in Dear John, as I mentioned. But also, he was in the 21 Jump Street movies, uh, White House Down, um, Side Effects, and all these others that he's been doing in his career. Uh, Jessica Lane, you may remember her from the movie King Kong, the remake from 1976. But I know she went on to do a lot of films like Losing Isaiah, uh, Blue Sky, which she won an Oscar for. Uh, she was in the, the remake, uh, The Postman Always Wings Twice. I think that's the one with uh, Jack Nicholson. Um, uh, she, she was in a lot of great films too. 
Um, and some bad films, but that's okay. Uh, Sam Neill from Jurassic Park. And, you know, Alan Grant, of course. He's going to be in the upcoming Jurassic Park uh, sequel. Yep, just what I've been waiting for. I saw the new trailer. Um, but he's been in a lot of great movies, too, and here and there. Uh, he was in Daybreakers. Uh, he was in The Commuter, and he was in uh, The Hunt for Red October. Come to mind. Great actor. Jessica McNamee, who I think she was in the, a TV show called Home and Away and Pack to the Raffers, um, which is a it was on this Australian network called Seven Network Television. Uh, Rennie Crewson, as you may know from the Santa Claus movies, The Doctor. She plays the Doctor in this film too, so that's interesting. And I know she was in the movie uh, with Tom Hanks called Mazes and Monsters, and yes, The Good Son with Macaulay Culkin and Elijah Wood. Not her best performance. Tatiana Maslany, um, I think she was in a TV show called Orphan Black uh, later on, and uh, yeah, so on and so forth. Lucas Bryant uh, from Haven, Scott Speedman, you may remember him from Felicity, uh, he also went on to do the Underworld films, uh, he was also in the movie Dark Blue with uh, Kurt Russell and Vin Wayne's. That's him. <laughs> Joey Klein, Joe uh, Cobden, Dylan Casey, Shannon Barnett, but Irving, Sarah Carter, and Rachel Skartstein. It's written by Abby Kahn, Mark Silverstein, Jessica Timms, and Stuart Sender. And it's directed by Michael Susi, who just did the HBO original movie, Grey Gardens, with Drew Barrymore and Jessica Lane, most of the stars, as we know. And he went on to do um, other works, including some episodes of 13 Reasons Why that's on Netflix, come to mind. The movie began set on a snowy night in Chicago, Illinois. Just when they got out of the movie theater, we meet a young marriage couple. One is a very beautiful woman named Paige Collins, played by Rachel McAdams, joining in with her hunky husband, Leo, played by Channing Tatum. They're about to go on their way home, because it has already been snowed in. <laughs> well... He turned on the radio to play the song, I Will Do Anything For Love, But I Won't Do That by Meatloaf, <laughs> who sadly passed away this year, Yeah, as we know. But if you saw the music video too, and it is a wonderful song, very rocking too. Uh, it was actually directed by none other than Michael Bay, who would soon went on to direct the first two Bad Boys movies along with... The Rock, Armageddon, Pearl Harbor, the the Island, and the Transformers movies come to mind. But this was at the time when he was directing music videos and commercials and stuff. Anyway, on their way home, they just hit a stop sign. Paige unbuckles her seatbelt to lean over to kiss Leo until all of a sudden, at the very moment... A truck had rammed straight from behind and crashed directly into the pole where uh, Leo suddenly um, suffers a whiplash. But Paige didn't come out so lucky because then the glass shattered from the windshield and then she flew all the way straight into the glass all the way for the front and she got knocked unconscious completely with all these cuts and bruises all these scars coming around and 
both of them were rushed into the emergency room at the hospital. So yes, we found out that Leo did have a whiplash and had some bruises. So he was in a coma for a little while, but he did finally recover. Uh, meanwhile, Paige um, had a head trauma, has amnesia, memory loss, so she pretty much lost five years uh, of her memory that she had, you know, coming from her family, her friends, and most of all, her marriage uh, with Leo. Yeah, it was horrible. So, that's where we get to see flashbacks of what happened in the past, you know, as told by Leo in a, in a narration, where they became engaged and they were married at the Art Institute of Chicago as they shared a kiss, you know, they're reading their marriage vows under the cloud gates because <laughs> they're being chased by all these security guards uh, joining with their friends. <laughs> uh, that was a pretty funny moment too. But now we f we flash forward to the present where Paige has been already been awoken from an induced coma and when she tries to regain consciousness she thinks that Leo is her doctor but we know that it was uh, her doctor, um, Fishman, who's played by Wendy Crewson, who just explains that, yes, she has amnesia, she lost her memory, everything that she remembers during those past years. And that's where she had to stay in the hospital for a while, so she'll continue to recover and be able to remember everything she has done. But it's going to be not easy for, for Leo because, you know, he's going to be struggling pretty hard to, to get along with Paige. Because it's, it's like he pretty much lost everything that he loved about Paige. It's like she's becoming a different person. So, soon uh, her wealthy parents, Bill and Rita Fortin, they're both played by... Uh, Sam Neill and Jessica Lane had learned about it once they visited her, but it was the first time that Leo met them, uh, but they do not appreciate Leo taking their daughter and not being informed about what's going on, but Paige does not understand why he wouldn't have met her parents. Well, that's the thing, even after being married, so they find out that he's basically a stranger. Of any kind. I, I know. And, and then we also begin to learn about why he doesn't understand why she left law school or anything that's happening in her life. We also learn that um, she does take sculpture because uh, inside uh, their, their entire um, apartment complex that they live, um, which also builds in with a studio inside. Um, we learned that she does um, she does a lot of sculpture and sometimes she even uh, works so uh, while the music is is played yeah like he turns on the radio and just listen to loud music while you know working so hard you know making love and all uh, we also learned that Leo is actually a music producer too uh, he goes to his uh, recording studio you know recording uh, of all the bands that they played uh, joining in with uh, Lily, uh, played by Tatiana Maslany. Uh, also, uh, Paige has a sister named Gwen, played by Jessica McNamee, who soon will, will become engaged with uh, Paige's uh, previous boyfriend, um, Jeremy, who's played by Scott Spearman, which they actually uh, had gotten married before. But then the, they also try to explain why she hasn't been in touch with her family and her friends uh, all this time. Okay, so anyway, her parents had insisted to taking her home with them, and Paige do agree for a while, but also thinking that it was a mutual benefit when 
she was married to to Leo. Everything just seems so overwhelming, so confusing, so frustrating. It just seems to go on for a couple months straight. But Leo is trying his best to actually teach uh, Paige how, having to go back to her memories. Having to remember everything that she has done in the past. Hoping to talk about everything that happened, but then it can lead to a lot of problems because now Leo tends to find out for himself about what he didn't know about, and this is where you know he gets frustrated and he starts. He even punches uh, Jeremy in the face uh, after his marriage uh, with uh, Paige's sister uh, Gwen. And there's also times when they started dating. Yeah, you know, they actually uh, went out to their cafe where they just about to have some nice, delicious chocolate. Maybe some that they like, some that they don't. <laughs> Sometimes they even have, you know, coffee or any um, sweet breads that they got inside. Uh everything. Even that evening, uh, Leo and Paige were invited for dinner by her parents later in the bar, but we learned that Leo does not quite fit with this particular family at all, not even her friends, so that leads to a lot of problems. Paige would later rejoins law school and Leo pretty much signs uh, divorce papers because you know he just couldn't take it as much. I mean, he had to sell all of her values that she has, you know, including the sculptures, out of the studio, out of the house, and um, apparently Leo even adopted a cat, uh, an alley cat that was in the way. So seeing that he's all alone now. And uh, despite of her father's misgivings that was happening about quitting law school and everything that was going on, like like cheating and other uh, marital affairs happening, um, it kind of drove her away when she finally regains uh, her memory. But as seasons change, uh, Leo discuss his philosophy about the moment of impact that was occurring. This this is part of uh, a vow that he was going to give. Was that it shows that yes, um, changes have any ripple effects from far beyond, but we can predict that sending some particles crashing together, making them closer than before, but sending off to great adventures, laying whatever you fought, you'll find them back or any other. So, so then that particular night, um, it was a snow day of course, um, they were about to head off to the cafe, uh, Paige actually found a menu card that was written by Leo which is their wedding vow, that they're about to go inside to get some coffee, but it was closed, and then they were trying to explain that they were going to go with him to their backup Cuban restaurant that she knew that they were asking about uh, during their relationship. So, of course, at that rate, um, as time's gone by, um, they finally got married again. And now they have two children. And as we speak, this was their uh, real life story that happened on September 18, 1993 by Kim and Cricket Carpenter. They wrote a book on their marriage, which 10 weeks after their wedding, that led to this serious car accident that happened. Yeah, Cricket, of course, suffers with brain trauma erase all the memories that they 
had and but nevertheless Kim was deeply in love with his wife and but somehow views him as a stranger after the accident so that was uh, based upon that and but luckily for them um, they stayed together for a long time and they had two children and but unfortunately though by 2018 um, they somehow admitted that they had an affair and they got divorced later doesn't end all happily there as we speak well what can you do anyway but it is a serious matter too I mean it, it also shows about what happens to this one person who has amnesia you know when they have a head trauma you know brain trauma that affects onto their temple that you begin to feel a lot of confusion a lot of frustration complexity you're also forgetful you forget for who you are or what you're doing and it's really hard because even loud noises can trigger you too like in that scene where she was um, trying to work on another sculpture especially the one that was unfinished and he had to turn on the, the radio hoping that she'll concentrate but she just couldn't because again her brain wasn't working that's what led to a lot of traumatic results I mean, everything that's happening is as traumatic as it could be. Also, poignancy, that you feel like you're a different person. You're not exactly who you are anymore. It's like, who is this person that I married? Is this my family? Are those my friends? Is this the, the city that I grew up in? What is this world? I mean, that's what we explain right here, too. Um, both Rachel McAdams, as well as Channing Tatum, they, they had terrific chemistry in the film. They played it exactly like the couple in real life, as it's inspired. Um, and I gotta say, they were beautiful in the movie. They really are. I mean, yeah, there were certain scenes in the movie where, <laughs> uh, just when they were making love, having sex and all, I mean, even when she was already, you know, having a memory loss, you know, there was a scene where she was about to, you know, get dressed and, you know, she was already in her lingerie, um, while he was naked, <laughs> like, yeah, she was already trying to get dressed and, and all. <laughs> and then later she was wearing the the Chicago Cubs uh, sweater. Yeah, while they were having breakfast and all. I mean, doing the usual stuff. And um, there were nice moments too where they end up going swimming at night uh, at the local beach. They're swimming undressed and on this uh, cold shivering uh, night you know she couldn't feel her fingers and all <laughs> tender moments there are other scenes too when Paige was actually looking at all the photos that she remembered she even watched the videotape of their marriage that was happening yes because uh, one of their friends actually shot this you also notice that it was actually shown on my uh, Sony 32 inch uh, Bravia. Well, I don't think it was 32 inch, but it could be a little bit more, but it's a little smaller compared to mine. But I'm assuming this might be the same TV. But it was a Bravia. And you notice that there was a lot of films that was on DVD that they had on their collection. I mean, one of them had Junebug in there too, as I noticed. And it had uh, a lot of stuff in this particular house. 
that they got. I mean, both of them did share a wonderful romantic kiss together. I mean, they really care for, for each other and not just being strangers. There's also great scenes, too, with the music. You know, when he was at the recording studio, uh, his friends, you know, they're recording a band and they're talking about all his other relationship problems and everything happening. Um, that sort of thing. Uh, the other characters are are great, uh, including Sam Neill and Jessica Lane playing the Paige's uh, parents. I mean, it was nice to see them too on screen, even though they're sort of uh, not almost trying to uh, get along with Leo, even though they didn't know about him. But then they thought that the way they're acting, you know, they're all acting snobbish and stuff. And this is what Leo felt. Okay, that sort of thing. But it's a great love story. You really felt for these two characters. I mean, it, it was hard that no matter what they do or how hard they tried, at the end of the day, they're going to fall in love again, and hopefully they'll stay together if that's all it takes uh, for Paige to finally recover from her memory loss. And Leo will finally, you know, felt like he's not a punching bag, you know, trying to help her out. Yeah. Uh, it does have a nice soundtrack, too. Uh, aside from Meatloaf, uh, we did have The Cure called Pictures of You, and yeah, great song, I love that song too, and they have other songs like, um, like Specs by Matt Pawn, PA, uh, Leaving on the Fifth by Bucks Hall Broadcast, uh, This Too Shall Pass by OK Go, uh, Come On Come On, which was a Dean and Britta remix uh, with Scar Parkis, features Britta Phillips and Dean uh, Wareham or any other and um, it uh, also had one um, also has a wonderful score by Rachel Poorman too um, joining in with Michael Brooks so it it just feels uh, very soothing as melodramatic as it could be at times um, it has wonderful cinematography by Roger Stouffer's, um, to see how beautiful Chicago really looks too, with all the, the shots of the buildings and all these other places around, everything, and all these magical scenes and other other scenes, everything. Yeah. And Michael Soucy did a great job directing this movie. He really uh, had the right choice to direct the film, joining with... Uh, two of our uh, famous leads yeah. like it really feels like what a love story should be no matter how tragic it is I mean it's sad but it's also romantic wonderful filled with joy anyway so that's the vow and I give the movie Four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.